Hi everybody, in our previous video, we learned about binary trees and what makes a normal tree end up becoming a binary tree. We looked at all the various rules and the multiple variations of binary trees that we will encounter. Now, what we didn't cover is how to actually write a binary tree in a way that our computers can actually understand them. In this video, we're gonna cover up for that lost ground. Now, if you wanna learn more about binary trees, their implementation, and just data structures and algorithms in general, my best-selling book on this topic, Algorithms, Absolute Beginner's Guide, is just what you need. You put some links below for you to be able to check it out on both online bookstores as well as physical bookstores. So definitely keep that in mind. Now, before I jump into code, I should just give you one heads up. The implementation we're gonna look at won't enforce any of the rules in sure validity. We'll cover that level of detail in the future, especially when we look at some other types of binary trees that are more strict in how they're implemented. And so in this case, it's up to us as a developer to ensure the binary tree we're building happens to have the right set of properties that we wanna make sure we maintain. So at a very high level, our binary tree is gonna be made up of a class called node, and then the node is gonna have a constructor which takes a few arguments. One is the data we want the node to store, and then the other is two values for left and right, the left and right pointers for the edges that our node will have. And our binary tree, then a combination of these, will make up the full tree structure that ends up becoming the binary tree. So let's go ahead and look at the code editor, and you can use any code editor you want. I'm using IDX, a Visual Studio-based code editor that's running in the browser. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is have my script tag, and I'm gonna go ahead and create my node class. So class node, constructor is data, and then it includes some properties for this data equals our data argument, this dot left equals null, because we don't have anything there, this dot right equals null. And so this is the basic of our current data structure for being able to store a node and a collection of these will make up our actual tree. Now let's go ahead and actually use it as, an, as part of an example. And so we have our node class and let me go ahead and start an example. Const root node, this is called root node, a equals new node. And the values for our node to store this be strings with the value a. So in this case, we have a root node a. And then next we want to do const child nodes. Let's do some const node b, sorry, lowercase node b equals new node b. We want to create a bunch of nodes. I'm going to create nodes from now, from a to all the way to g actually. So I'm going to copy and paste this multiple times. And so a, b, okay. And then go ahead and rename this c, node c. Actually, not node root node, just node. So const node b. As you can see, we're doing this all live with no editing in between. C, D, E, F, and G. And let me go ahead and also make sure the value we're storing is also representative of that. C, D, E, F, and G. All right, so here we have some code that highlights the multiple nodes we have for representing our tree. We have a root node called A, then you have about one, two, three, or six nodes that are from B to G. Now, the thing is, nodes by themselves aren't particularly interesting because it's just things that are floating in the air. There needs to be a connection between them. And that connection is made by using the left and right properties that we added earlier. So node A that left equals node B, root node A dot right is gonna be node C. And which means that you know you have a root node A and then B is the left child, C is the, C is the right child. And then similarly, I'm gonna go ahead and node B dot left equals node D. Okay, in this case, the AI kind of gave us right an answer, but you can see how node B has a child you know, on the left, which is node D. Node B also has a right child, which is gonna be node E. And then lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and do node E dot left equals node F, and then node E dot right equals node G. And so once we have this, you can see that we have our node object, node class, and then we have our tree that we've created where you have at the root, node A. Node A has two children, B and C, and then left and right of, in this case, B, you have D and E, and then left and right of node E, you have F and G. So you have a very simple binary tree where you have things that are the children on the left and right hand side. Now, if I were to like, let's say I want to create a perfect binary tree or a balanced binary tree, like I mentioned in the slides earlier, 
our code here is not going to enforce some of that. We will look into that though in future versions, but what I want to just show you is a very quick implementation of Node and creating a binary tree, which as you can see, is not particularly complex if you just look at it purely from a foundational point of view of having the nodes and the two children represented as the edges represented as the properties that we have. So getting back to our slides here, the main thing to keep in mind is that if you have any questions, ask in the forums at promotegroup.com. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have a community that is gonna be helping you along the way, encouraging you and answering any questions they might have because you will run into this and doing these things on your own, it can be helpful sometimes, but other times it's just good to just bounce ideas off of someone and get some help. So definitely take advantage of the forums. And if you wanna know more about the videos that I create or just keep up with speed on just general content I share on multiple networks, the links here will be able to help you out. And with that, I will see you all next time.